There's no one else that can match Kaching's deadly playstyle, and the only question remains how are you going to build her? The most important thing to understand about Kaching is that unlike any other character in the game, she offers multiple playstyle choices, and depending on which one you prefer, building her is going to be a little different than you're used to your regular character guide. And you basically have the choice between going physical or electro, and the main difference between the two, in terms of gameplay, would be that you fully utilize everything she has to offer if you use her as electro, but if you decide to go with physical build instead, then you have to keep two critical things in mind. First of all, her iconic elemental skill can be activated and then recaptured casted once again, which in return will infuse all of Kaching's normal and charged attacks with Electro, and that's something you will need to prevent from happening if you will be playing her physical build, since you're going to lose out on a lot of damage. And the other thing would be her burst, which for the most part doesn't require any sort of special setup except for the fact that it's not going to be your big source of damage if you go with physical and instead you will rely on the second passive talent to boost her critical rating and energy recharge by 15%, which means your main priority is to maintain these buffs on her by unleashing the burst as often as possible. Finally, when circling back to her Electro playstyle, the most important thing you will want to master is the upkeep of her elemental infusion so that you can throw the stiletto, recast it and gain the Electro buff, then unleash a few attacks or even a burst and then repeat the cycle so that you don't lose out on the infusion and maximize Electro damage output, which all of this can happen thanks to the low cooldown of her elemental skill. And aside from these things, there's few other little quirks and techniques you will come to learn and appreciate about her, but for the most part, you really just need to understand the difference between her two builds since there aren't any other characters that have such a deep foundation as her when it comes to deciding which build to pursue. When it comes to her equipment, there's definitely a lot of exciting choices to go over, some of which have been surprisingly doing well since the game's launch. Now looking first at her physical build, luckily for the free-to-play options, we have a solid choice of going with the prototype Rancor, which you should be able to get to the second refinement level at the minimum, because the game's storyline provides these resources for free. And if you get luck and get even more prototypes from weekly bosses, you can further refine it and capitalize on the stronger passive benefits the sword provides. But if you have purchased the battle pass, you can go with the black sword which doesn't gain that much from further refinements and is nearly on the same damage output level as Rancor at second refinement, but on the flip side, it becomes easier to manage the ratio between critical rating and damage thanks to the weapon's substat. Of course, for any of the 5 star weapons, they're going to be your top choice except for Skyward Blade, which gets outperformed by Rancor or Black Sword, so the top priority for one of these legendary weapons would be first the Quill of Favonia, followed by Primordial Jade Cutter and then Summit Shaper. Moving over to Electro Scythe, there is a difference in performance depending on whether you prefer to use her as support or main damage dealer. But if you decide to keep her on the field for a prolonged period of time as your main damage dealer, then Black Sword followed by Lion's War are excellent choices, while the third option of going with the Black Lift Long Sword for that extra critical damage could also work out well, but only if you're at the end game and able to manage the 2 to 1 ratio with critical rating. And nearly every weapon mentioned for her Electro main damage dealer build applies to her support role, except Lion's War becomes a better option, and Black Sword falls off a little because you won't be utilizing its passive and instead, you can rely on a fully refined Harbinger of Dawn as a second contender to Lion's Roar, which is pretty amazing considering this is just a 3-star weapon. And if you're one of the lucky ones and have a 5-star weapon that's not Skyward Blade, it will be the top choice for the Electro build with Primordial Jade Cutter landing on the first priority. Finally, the last option, and not necessarily the worst, could be the Flute, which doesn't outperform any of the mentioned weapons previously, but if you're somehow unable to obtain any of them, then it will still serve you well. Also, for more artifact builds and weapon evaluations, make sure to follow us on Twitter, link in the description. Now thankfully, when looking at the artifacts, it's not as complicated as weapons, and for her physical build, the best choice for her would be the two set bonus of Bloodstain and Gladiators, which shouldn't be too hard to obtain, and it couldn't get more simple than to obviously get attack percentage on Sands, a physical damage goblet, and a critical rating or damage for Circlet that will depend on your 2 to 1 ratio. Moving over to her Electro side, you definitely want to go with a 4 set bonus of Thunder Soother, which will provide an irrelevant 2 set, but really after the awesome 30 5% increased damage against targets afflicted by Electro, which significantly increases her damage output. But if you have trouble obtaining decent pieces to complete the set bonus, you can go for a split bonus between Thundering Fury and Gladiators, just for those easy to grab attack bonuses. And if you're using her as your support damage dealer, you can in fact go with Thundering Fury and Noblesse Oblige to set bonuses to power up her burst attack. And regarding main stats of the artifacts, follow the same pattern as physical, except you want to go for an Electro Goblet instead. And when looking at her talent leveling priority, 
no matter what build you pursue, you want to get her normal attack as high as possible before moving over to her elemental skill and then finally her burst, with the only exception being if you're going to use her more often as a damage support then focus on getting her burst leveled up. So with all of this said and done, you're probably wondering which build is better and the answer usually relies on what equipment you have. If you got lucky with the weapon gacha system or have purchased the battle pass, you can choose either of the builds, but for a lot of people it will mostly come down to the artifacts and weapons they already have. But this Lightning Queen doesn't just rely on equipment and her subjects or in this case teammates could be the deciding factor for you. Even though there's no one that can match her stylish playstyle, we still need teammates to unleash her full potential and the first consideration that comes with every decision would be to identify her build. So if you're using her as your main physical damage dealer, then she basically needs a cryo teammate by default for those superconduct reactions and then anyone who can provide bursts or elemental reactions that linger on the battlefield is going to be the ideal strategy for her, with the most exceptional teammates being Ching Cho, Fischl, Xiangling and Beto, while not forgetting guys like Bennett or Zhongli who can boost her own damage and of course, you can't go wrong with animal characters like Venti or Sucrose. Now for her Electro build, everything is pretty much the same except you don't need to rely on a Cryo character and you have slightly more freedom in team compositions, but there's going to be a strong emphasis on animal who will need to make sure they can group enemies into a tight place so that your Electro attacks can hit as many enemies as possible. And it's kind of unfair to call Kaching as a support damage dealer if you choose to only use her burst and elemental skill by quickly swapping to her, since her damage is seriously impressive but you're also not that limited by team pick choices because you aren't really building a team around her anymore. Of course, don't forget to sneak in few of those charge or normal attacks before swapping her out. Either way, most of the teammates work well with her, which helps her out when you need to fill those mandatory team spots for the best benefits. No matter how you slice it, Kaching is definitely going to win the hearts of many, not only by having one of the most adrenaline filled playstyles in the game, but also provides a ton of options for you to build her. Overall, the main attraction of choosing her as your new teammate comes down to a good selection of free to play weapons like Prototype Rancor or Harbinger of Dawn, which complement one of her playstyles or roles, and even investing into something as a battle pass once to obtain the Black Sword will give you a lot of freedom, not to mention how easy it is to farm few of the artifact 2 set bonuses so you can start using her immediately. Then there's also the the fact that her electro damage is pretty insane, which works out well with our 5 star design and she's definitely the leading member of this elemental alignment, so if you're itching to shock your enemies to submission, she's going to be the perfect choice for you. However, when looking at some of her drawbacks, it's hard to ignore the stamina issue you will be facing with if you're going to use her physical or electro build for charge attacks, especially if there's going to be floors on the abyss which deplete the stamina quickly. But probably the hardest thing about her is that it's not even her own fault, but the elements and electro is definitely at the short end of the stick. with several enemy types completely ignoring either her elemental reactions or even the electro damage itself, not to mention when you have the other elements which can at least trigger vaporize or melt and take advantage of all the stats the character has. Still, the fact that you can choose several playstyles and have a lot of freedom with equipment choices makes her into an excellent character that will feel even more rewarding for those who are going to master all of her quirks and techniques. Well, maybe the only thing you won't ever be able to master about her are those weird teleportation spots. Producing these videos takes a lot of resources and effort, so if there's going to be any mistakes included, make sure to check out the pinned comment below the video. Also, you can help us out by subscribing and clicking the bell notification on and gently pressing the like button. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, where all of the extra details about Kaching will be shared. And as always, thank you for your support and watching us.